issues. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to send America's hearts and prayers to the people of Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Both have been devastated, and I mean absolutely devastated, by Hurricane Maria, and we're doing everything in our power to help the hard-hit people of both places, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. A massive effort is underway, and we have been really treated very, very nicely by the governor and by everybody else. They know how hard we're working and what a good job we're doing. As we speak, FEMA, our great first responders, and all available federal resources, including the military, are being marshaled to save lives, protect families, and begin a long and very, very difficult restoration process. I have directed all relevant departments and agencies to assist in the response and recovery effort. As Governor Rossello just told me this morning, the entire federal workforce is doing great work in Puerto Rico. And I appreciated his saying it. And he's saying it to anybody that will listen. Our team has been incredible after having gone through Texas and then Florida with other stops along the way. And he further went on, he said, and through the Trump administration's leadership, the relationship between FEMA and my team is very, very strong. I will be going to Puerto Rico on Tuesday. I'll also be going to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Over the last several weeks, our nation has been tested by the destructive force of Mother Nature. But we will respond to it with an even mightier force. The resolve of the American spirit, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida, are in really good shape and moving along well. We thank all of the first responders and volunteers who have risked their lives, and that's what they did. They risked their lives. To all of those impacted by the trouble and these horrible hurricanes and storms that have affected and impacted our country, I thank you. The recovery process will be a very, very difficult one. We will get through this, and we will get through it together. We will be stronger. We will be bigger. We will be I'm better. I'm nervous, Steve. <laughs> when the NFL instead of dealing with Puerto Rico, why isn't that a fair assessment? Well, I wasn't preoccupied with the NFL. I was uh, ashamed of what was taking place because to me, that was a very important moment. I don't think you can disrespect our country, our flag, our national anthem. Uh, to me, the NFL situation is a very important situation. I've heard that before about was I preoccupied. Not at all. Not at all. I have plenty of time on my hands. All I do is work. And to be honest with you, that's an important function of working. It's called respect for our country. Many people have died. Many, many people. Many people are so horribly injured. I was at Walter Reed Hospital recently, and I saw so many great young people, and they're missing legs, and they're missing arms, and they've been so badly injured. And they were fighting for our country. They were fighting for our flag. They were fighting for our national anthem. And for people to disrespect that by kneeling during the playing of our national anthem, I think, is disgraceful. So uh, I will also say that, again, I read you part of his quote, but the governor of Puerto Rico is so thankful for the great job that we're doing. We did a great job in Texas, a great job in Florida, a great job in Louisiana. We hit little pieces of Georgia and Alabama. And uh, frankly, we're doing — and it's the most difficult job because it's on the island. It's on an island in the middle of the ocean. It's out in the ocean. You can't just drive your trucks there from other states. And uh, the governor said we are doing a great job. In fact, he thanked me specifically for FEMA and all of the first responders in Puerto Rico. And we're also mentioning with that the U.S. Virgin Islands. It was devastated. So we are totally focused on that. But at the same time, it doesn't take me long to put out a wrong, and maybe we'll get it right. I think it's a very important thing for the NFL to not allow people to kneel during the playing of our national anthem, to respect our country and to respect our flag. Okay. North Korea. As far as Puerto Rico is concerned, I think just the opposite. We have had tremendous reviews from government officials, as we have in Texas and Louisiana, and as we have in Florida, as you know, from Governor Scott and uh, Greg Abbott, great governors. And 
this morning the governor made incredible statements about how well we're doing. We understand it's a disaster. It's a disaster that just happened. Uh, the grid was in bad shape before the storm. And Puerto Rico didn't get hit by one hurricane. Got hit by two hurricanes. And they were among the biggest we've ever seen, with the second one being even worse. I mean, the second one hit Puerto Rico as a Category 5. I don't believe anybody's ever seen that happen before. Hit land with that kind of velocity. The governor has been extremely generous, and I appreciated it. We right now have our top people from FEMA, and they have been there. We are unloading, on an hourly basis, massive loads of water and food and supplies for Puerto Rico. And this isn't like Florida, where we can go right up the spine, or like Texas, where we go right down the middle and we distribute. This is, you know, a thing called the Atlantic Ocean. This is tough stuff. The governor has been so incredible in his, in his statements about the job we're doing. We're doing a great job. Don't forget, their police force has been decimated because many of the police in Puerto Rico have lost their homes. So, sure, they want to be police, but they also want to be able to watch their families and find their families, and they have to live. So we're also very much involved in security in Puerto Rico. So everybody has said it's amazing the job that we've done in Puerto Rico. We're very proud of it. And I'm going there on Tuesday. Now, with all of that being said, record Record, if you look at the, the amount of water dropped on that island between the two hurricanes, and the first they just barely got by with, but they were devastated, and the second was a complete wipeout. I mean, this was a, a place that was destroyed. So uh, I think we've done a really good job. We're continuing to. We are literally unloading on an hourly basis water, food, supplies. We have our top people from FEMA and our first responders and everybody else. We're going to be deploying Navy ships. They've already been deployed. And uh, we are going to do far more than anybody else would ever be able to do. And we're, it's being recognized as such. But it is, it is a tough situation. Would you have a question for the President? Mr. Prime Minister, if I may, sir, do you share President Trump's hostility toward the Venezuelan regime? And what is your opinion generally of his, that is to say, President Trump's suggestion that U.S. military intervention might be required if the Venezuelan government doesn't change course. Do you support that? And would you be an advocate within the EU for tougher sanctions against the Venezuelan government? Mira, nosotros estamos... Well, we're spearheading in the European Union a proposal to impose sanctions on Venezuela. What is happening in Venezuela is unacceptable. Venezuela traditionally was a democratic country, and at this time it's no longer a democratic country. There are political prisoners in Venezuela. There are people who are in jail only because they think uh, differently than Mr. Maduro. And I was the first uh, prime minister to receive Lilian Tintori, who's uh, the wife of Leopoldo Lopez, who was jailed because Mr. Maduro didn't like him. But there were many others who were sent to jail. In Venezuela, there was a parliament, and the government has made up this other parliament, which uh, is, has its meeting next to the other parliament, and it enacts legislation. They've created a commission for the truth, which is an anti-democratic tool, which only serves to judge people without respecting minimum human rights standards. Uh, Venezuela is on the road to dictatorship unless that can be stopped. So all of those who share values such as democracy, freedom, and human rights have to do something. At this time, sanctions are important. It's important that there be an international coalition putting pressure on Maduro so that political prisoners are freed and democracy is restored, because this lack of democracy and the attack against human rights and freedoms are uh, come in conjunction with uh, economic um, a, a terrible economic situation with a 300 percent inflation rate with problems supplying foods and medicines to people so it's a really tragic situation and I think that we have uh, we in the United States and Spain have a responsibility towards Venezuela there are a lot of Spaniards living in Venezuela and I'm worried about them about them and the rest but they certainly worry me so I think that the international community uh, it should be forceful with regards to Venezuela. 
Gracias. Buenas tardes. Thank you. Pilar Santos from El Periódico de Catalunya. I have a question for each of you, for President Trump. With the serious uh, political crisis in Spain because of the referendum on Sunday, what solution do you think there is? Have you given advice to President Rajoy on this matter? Do you think there should be uh, a dialogue between the, the Generalitat and the government to find a solution? And now a question for uh, Prime Minister Rajoy. It seems that uh, what you're doing in Catalonia, the way you're managing uh, things in Catalonia, is having an impact on the budget. And I'd also like to know whether you think that the situation with the PNV party can be resolved, or do you think that there will, you will have to call early elections? Thank you very much. Well, I think the people of Catalonia have been talking about this for a long time. But I bet you, if you had uh, accurate numbers and accurate polling, you'd find that they love their country, they love Spain, and they wouldn't leave. So I'm just for United Spain. I, I speak as the President of the United States. Uh, as somebody that has great respect for your president and also has great, really great respect for your country, I really think the people of Catalonia would stay with Spain. I think it would be foolish not to, because you're talking about staying with a truly great, beautiful, and very historic country.